Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. So one of the ways that I get ideas of how to make videos is just looking at top searches. So there's this section called research uh, if you have a YouTube channel and it shows you the top searches and I, I saw, oh, Velocity Banking with a personal line of credit. So I'll just make this video about a Velocity, call it Velocity Banking with a personal line of credit, even though I'm pretty sure I've made at least probably more than 50 videos on this subject. So this is Velocity Banking with per, a personal line of credit, and we're gonna show you how to do that, really simple. So what is Velocity Banking? All it is is a financial strategy or philosophy to be able to pay off debts quickly with something called a line of credit. And so what's a line of credit? All it is is a financial tool where you can borrow money, pay it back, and use it over and over again, right? So a credit card actually fit in this, fits in this category, even though there's some restrictions with the credit card. And in this example, what we're going to do is use a personal line of credit to be able to pay off this debt. So first things first, what do we, uh, the two things that we need to do velocity banking, the first thing is the budget, right? So I'm kind of 75% completed it, and then you'll see me complete the rest of it in real time. And then the next step is the line of credit, and we're going to use that as our main operating account to pay off our debt. Okay, so now let's just kind of fill this in of our budget and what's the difference between an average American and someone who does velocity banking. The average American uses their checking account to pay for their bills, right? Whereas velocity banking is going to be our line of credit, in this case, a personal line of credit uh, as our main operating account. Now, if we go in here, we have a credit card of 10K and 3K. So let's go ahead and calculate the minimum payment. And then you could go to bankrate.com uh, to kind of figure that out because they have various methods of calculating uh, minimum interest payments or minimum payments for the for credit cards. So let me just do this here. So I think we had $10,000 at, what was the interest rate? 30% interest, right? So 30, oopsie, I did this wrong. So 30%. Okay, and then let's go ahead and calculate that, and that'll be a $350 payment, $350, and then credit card two is $3,000 at 28% interest. Ooh, that's a big number. $3,000 at 28% interest, and then I'm gonna calculate that, and that's gonna be $100. All right, so now what's our cap? Uh, Okay, so our expenses is about 4,000. So we have savings of about $1,000, which is not bad, right? But you know, if I make $5,500 a year, that's almost close to six figures. And um, I'm only making, having $1,000 left to a month. It's, it's kind of, you know, I wish I could get more. And which is what we're gonna do. We're gonna pay off these three debts, credit card one, credit card two, auto loan, right? So the objective is to pay off so let's just figure this out, 10 plus three plus 22. So if you see these balances here, 10, three and 22, 35K of debt. So pay off 35K of debt. And we're gonna assume that this is just a fresh new car loan. So we haven't paid off any of the principal yet. We just literally got the car today, okay? And so velocity banking, right? So basically what we're gonna do is just copy some of this data and assume, okay, that most of this is going to be the same and there's not going to be any savings and what we're going to do is use our cash flow to pay off our debt right and you'll see what i mean by that so what we're going to do is go to the bank or credit union or whatever and ask for a line of credit so i have a, a credit line a personal line of credit at 15 thousand dollar limit and some of you might be looking at this and thinking oh my goodness fifteen thousand dollars that's insane who would lend me that money right and again if you have a good credit profile you have some decent income and um banks will lend it to you because they want to make money off of interest payments and they're hoping that you don't pay it off right and here's the thing I actually, as of today, I actually have over two hundred forty thousand dollars in lines of credit right so if you take a look at my community feed here I, I got, I'm now trying to build business credit. And so I got an American Express blue business cash, whatever they call it. And this is uh, my first business credit card for my rental property business, 24 grand, boom, right? And again, um, if you know anything about business credit, there's ways, various ways to get it. The easiest way is with a good personal credit profile. So if you have good personal credit, good income, your rental properties making income, 
Um, again, don't lie on your applications because I think that's a federal crime. You definitely don't want to do that. Um, I got a $24,000 limit, right? So again, you know, over $240,000 as of today. I know people with a lot more than I do, but you know, it's it depends on where you at your step of your journey. So if you think 15 grand is a lot, it's actually not a lot for me at this stage. But if I you talked to me about, you know, in my 20s, um, I would have said, oh my goodness, I only have a $500 credit card. If somebody could be a 10 grand credit card, that would be out of this world. And now, like, now that I think about it, 10 grand's not that much, right? Or at least if someone gave me a 10 grand credit card, I'd be like, get out of here, right? All right. So now let's let's go back here. Um, so now what we're gonna do is use this personal line of credit. Again, what is a personal line of credit? If well, basically, I'm just gonna explain it to you like this. You go to the bank's website, you click a button, and then they dump cash to your checking account or savings account, and then you could use it however you wish, and you get charged 15%. Um, in some ways, it's better than a credit card. In some ways, it's worse, right? So I'm not gonna go too much in details into that, but that's why I have both credit cards and a personal line of credit and a home equity line of credit, and now I've got a business credit card. And then soon, you know, once I have enough revenue in the business, then I'm gonna apply for a business line of credit, and then, um, you know, sky's the limit, right? All right, so now, we have 15 grand here, so this is what we can do, right? So why don't we transfer these two credit cards into this line of credit? So that's gonna be 13 grand. And actually, this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna click a button on the bank's website, transfer 13 grand to the checking or savings account, and then pay this off. And then this is gonna go bam, bam right here. This is gonna be zero, right? And then now I'm gonna have a 13 grand balance on that on the bank's website the personal line of credit okay and so what we're going to do and take a look at this our cash flow just magically increased to 15 uh 15k not 15k 1500 dollars right just by simply making a transfer okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to just do the strategy so what it is is you tip put your entire paycheck here and then you take your expenses out of there right and then you just rinse and repeat and have your cash flow pay down the balance okay so now what we're going to do is just do a simple formula of the previous month's balance plus the previous month's interest and as you can see here with for this is the first month we're doing the strategy this is actually month zero so there's not going to be any interest but it, it just um include that anyways because it'll make it easier to copy and paste the formula for the next months so minus 1575 right and then uh, we're going to calculate the interest here. So now the way that we calculate the interest is we take the average daily balance. So the way that you can estimate it is just simply to average right here and then get these two uh, numbers. Whoopsie. All right. And then you multiply it by the interest rate. So in this case, it's going to be 15.15. And then you divide by 12 to get the monthly interest, right? And then now all you got to do is just copy and paste the formula until you see a red red uh, text, because that means the line of credit's paid off, right? Okay, so now um, let me go ahead and do this here. So there'll be K3 plus one, and we'll see how many months it took to pay off the 13 grand. So it took nine months, nine months. So let's just do some milestones, milestones. And let's go ahead and highlight this, make it red. Um, okay, so 13k nine months right which is not bad you know i think i saw in the news about how somebody paid off 50k in two years and i paid off 58k of my mortgage in one year so you know to each to each their own right all right so now uh we're gonna have to pay off this auto loan so if we have um uh, an auto loan and this is let's say our last debt we could do one of two things i can directly pay the auto loan with cash with my savings or i can do it with the line of credit right and so it's like why would you ever pay with the 15 percent line of credit uh instead of just paying with a zero percent no interest cash well the main thing i guess i would uh say about that is again you can do both right why would i want to transfer some of the principal to the line of credit and pay off with my cash flow just because for me it's okay to you know use the line of credit as a tool to prevent something called segregation of income. That's my main concern, right? So if I dump all this cash here, okay, I dump all this cash there, 
if I ever need an emergency, I certainly have these credit cards, right? But once you start using credit card one, credit card two, I almost 90% guarantee, and again, this isn't for everybody, that you're going to engage, be engaged in something on credit, um, segregation of income. And segregation of income is the main reason why most six-figure people are broke. And if you don't know what I mean by that, I, I actually have other videos talking about it more in detail. But basically, the way that banks want you to spend your money is you get your paycheck, and then you have like you want to pay off credit card one, two, three, loan one, two, three, and have your money split in many different ways, right? And so to make it easier to control your liquidity and control your money and make sure you prevent segregation of income, we can just um, transfer a portion of our debt to the line of credit and then and then just do the same thing over and over again. So hopefully that doesn't sound complicated. It's not as complicated as, as much as it sounds. It's just when I dump this into the, the loan directly, then that money's completely gone, if that makes sense, okay? Well, it's not completely gone because you have these as a backup, but you get what I'm saying. All right, but either way is valid. So here at this point, so now let's say that I wanna just pay off, and actually let's see what the principal is after nine months. So let me go here to the hmm, bank rate uh, auto loan calculator, and they could show me the, the schedule of the payments, amortization schedule, and I think it's 22,000 at 6%, right? And then amortization schedule. Okay, so now we got that, and let's see after nine months what it is. So two, three, four, let's go to nine. So it's going to be in about 19 grand, 1940.33. Okay, excellent. All right. All right, cool. So now we're just going to estimate some of this. And some of this is actually going to be a little bit off because as you transfer um, the, what's it called, auto loan to the line of credit, right? You still have to make payments to the auto loan, right? And, and so it's almost like you're kind of double paying, okay? But we're going to assume that we're not doing that. Well, actually, that 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 the principal is only being paid, which is kind of inaccurate. If that and if that doesn't make sense. Just bear with me. All right. So let's just go ahead and transfer five thousand five hundred. So what's nineteen forty three? So nineteen four thirty three minus five five zero zero. That will be thirteen nine thirty three. Thirteen nine thirty three. Okay. And so what we do is just transfer 5,000 here to our line of credit and then just pay it off with our cash flow, 5,500, right? And then what you do is you just kind of rinse and repeat until this goes to zero again. Okay, so 10, 11, 12, oopsie, 11, 12, 13. Right, and so it took us about three, three, four months to to really pay it off. Um, but let's take a look here. So let's say if we're just gonna pay on the bank schedule, right? How long would it have taken us to go to thirteen grand? So let's take a look here, and then we scroll all the way down. Uh, about and what is this? Thirteen. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting lost. 13, 90, 33. So 13 right here. So that would be, hmm, that's a lot of months, right? So we were at right here. So 9, 24 to 1, 26, right? So almost two years, and we did it about three, four months, right? Okay, so now we just kind of rinse and repeat again. Again, this is actually going to be a lower number because we're making payments as we're doing the, the chunking. Uh, but let's just kind of bear, bear with me here. So we'll just do another 5,500, right? And then that's going to be 8433. And I actually have a cheat sheet velocity banking calculator to do this, right? But it doesn't really. This is good enough. Cowboy math. All right. So now 5500. Is it five five zero zero? Yes, it is. Okay, and then now we just kind of rinse and repeat again. Okay. All right. So now fourteen 
14, 15, 16, another three months. And then you, as you can see, you just kind of rinse and repeat the process. So we just need to just do literally two more, right? 5500, oh wait, my bad. So let me just do this, minus 5500, and that'll be 2933, 2933, okay. And then we just do it again, plus 5500. And actually, can we just pay this thing all all off? Actually, I think we can. Let me calculate the cash flow index. So if you don't, again, I might be um, making this a little bit more complicated than, than possible, but if the cash flow index is below 50, and if you don't know what that means, that's just the formula of the monthly, um, the, the, the statement balance divided by the minimum payment. And if it's below 50, it just means pay it off. So let me just take a look right here. So 8433 3 divided by four to five. Yeah, it's definitely below 50. So we could just put the whole thing in and free up this $425 of cash flow. So that's another way we can do it. So let, let me just do that. Um, all right. All right. So let me just quickly do my math here. So at nine months, we do our first chunk, right? And then second chunk is right here. And then third chunk is right there but how many chunks do we do here so one two three okay so wait no one two three so at the second one why don't we just put the eight thousand four hundred hmm wait hold up one two three okay so at the third one we're gonna put the whole thing not five thousand five hundred all right so now what we're gonna do, so let me just do this. Eight four move the eight four three three. And hopefully I didn't confuse all of you, but let's just do this. Eight four three three. And then what happens is if we move this eight four three three into the entire line of credit, then bam, this becomes more cash flow for us. And now we have two thousand dollars of cash flow. Okay, so now what we do is we just subtract that sucker, minus two zero zero zero, and then we just wait until this thing becomes red. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, right? So 21 months. And how much was that? So that's 35K, 21 months. Uh, I spelled this wrong. Well, I don't know if this is spelling, but I put this in wrong. But yeah, so basically we paid off that 35K of debt. Uh, the auto loan, two credit cards, relatively easy. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen any of the other videos, but I've actually met people and people reach out to me all the time about how they're six figures and broke. So if you don't think like, oh, making more money is the solution, or I'm sorry, if you do think making more money is always the solution, that's not true. If you're low income, yeah, you know, you're at the poverty line like I was a long time ago, definitely make more income. But there comes a point where you're like six figures, you're above, I don't know if you've ever seen those articles where it's like 50% of millennial six figure earners are paycheck to paycheck, right? You ever see those? So if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you're making good money, at that point, it's not a, a, an income problem because more income is just going to, um, you know, you'll just have more expenses that go up proportionally. It's called Parkinson's law, right? But it's at this point, it's a cash flow management problem. So you have to make sure that you prevent, um, you know, all these debt eating up your cash flow, but also preventing the segregation of income. I always say in every video that I talk about it, it's the it's the really the reason why six figure people are broke. Okay. All right. So um, this is Crane Atlanta Mentorship. So if you're interested in joining our group, go ahead and click the Google form link below. Other than that, um, let's see how many videos I can crank out today. I might, maybe this is the last video for today. I don't know. All right. Have a great day, everybody. And we will speak next time.